Hello, my name is Adria Kumar Menin and my individual project is Energy Consumption of Parallel Patterns. What are parallel pattern libraries? They are libraries built as an abstraction layer over current OS level thread manipulation software such as pthreads or Windows Threadpool. They simplify the creation of multi-threaded applications by taking advantage of the multiple cores that are available in modern microprocessors for a performance boost. While improved performance is the goal of these libraries, they do not consider the energy consumption of solutions built with them. Global warming continues to advance at a rapid pace. It is becoming crucial to consider the environmental impact that computing plays in harming our planet. Based on a 2013 study by the Digital Power Group, it was found that 10% of global energy production goes towards computation technology, which is 50% more than global aviation at the time of publication. The objectives of this project are to identify cutting-edge parallel pattern libraries, evaluate and benchmark the energy consumption and performance of these libraries, find the relationship between the performance benchmarks and energy consumption, identify the parameters of parallel patterns and their impact on the performance and energy consumption, as well as construct a search space for multi-objective optimization techniques that find the best trade-offs between performance and energy conservation. To begin with, for the approach taken to this project, since it was a research heavy project, was to identify the main objectives. The need. Um, then weekly meetings were organized with my project supervisor. And in the first meeting, the objectives that I identified were confirmed. Um, the weekly meeting served as a progress report and helped answer my queries. On a rolling basis, m multiple software-based power measuring tools were used, mainly S-TY and PowerTop. The final measure of energy was a bash script with access to a Linux kernel. At first, it was unclear as to what algorithms would be beneficial to benchmark after meeting with my supervisor, matrix multiplication was suggested. On further research into similar work, I found that the PAMPAR benchmarks, which provide a guideline as to the algorithms that could serve as good benchmarks. PAMPAR is a project that's very similar to what I am trying to achieve, except that PAMPAR looks into the parallel pattern interfaces such as pthreads. Once the benchmarks were written, they were run and the data was collected. Statistical anal analysis was carried out on the data and graphs were produced. FastFlow. FastFlow is a parallel pattern library. It contains a set of building blocks in order to create a multi-threaded application. The node is the base structure which represents a single worker unit that can perform a task. The pipe or pipeline can be thought of as a list of nodes that, on completing their task, sends output to the next node for processing. The nodes in the pipe run concurrently. A farm is a collection of nodes that share an input and output stream. By default, the nodes are assigned tasks in a pseudo-round robin order. Task allocation can be changed by using a FastFloat's load balancer. Feedback channels are pipelines that send output data from a node to a previous node in the pipe. The parallel for is a loop that is similar to a for loop, but has the number of cores as a parameter, allowing you to vary the number of cores. A combination of the building blocks above are known as a skeleton. An accelerator is a way of sending data to a fast flow skeleton to be processed. The fast flow skeleton's first node usually generates their own data, and um, that removes the need for an accelerator. Other parallel pattern libraries include Intel One API thread building blocks, OpenMP, Microsoft Parallel Patterns Library. This project will mostly focus on FastFlow. Design. The GitHub version control was used to track progress and mark milestone changes in uh, the project. 
languages utilized were C++, Python, and Bash. C++ serves as a benchmark. Bash would run the tests and record energy readings. Python would either generate or aggregate data. Fastflow nodes utilize 100% of a core. Therefore, to take recordings, all algorithms that are multi-threaded have to use a core less than the maximum. The matrix multiplication algorithm was the simplest working solution and is not an optimal one. The matrices are stored in 2D vectors to allow for size variability. When data is read from a generated file, it is stored in a vector of 2D vector matrices. The solution is aimed at laptops with a battery. The test was run by varying the number of cores, which is the parameter that the parallel algorithm requires. Implementation The battery reader shell script was made to take energy readings from a laptop battery by using Linux kernel's battery access. The readings do not update more frequently than a few seconds, so the script was made to sleep for a second between readings. While implementing a fast flow matrix multiplication using the usual node-based pipeline, errors with the fast flow library were observed. That led to using the parallel for loop. An ideal speed-up calculation uses the fastest serial algorithm, which led me to the Strassen algorithm for matrix multiplication. On readings against the naive algorithm, the naive algorithm outperformed the Strassen algorithm. Above here, we see the results of the test with a 400 times 400 matrix, and uh, we're, we're noticing that most of the, the results are 1x speedups and 0x speedups, with a very small percentage being 2x speedups. Here we see that uh, the results for a 2000x2000 matrix and 2100x2100 matrix. What is common among both of these matrices sets is that uh, the one when using one core, a speed up of one x is expected. Another common thing is that when we're observing two cores, is that uh, a speed up of two x is the majority. With the two thousand x two thousand matrices having a 3x speed up at two cores and 2100 and 2100x having a small speed up of 1x, which is strange occurrence, possibly because 2000 is a more easily handleable number. Once we get to the three cores mark, the results are very different for both matrices data sets. At 4x for 2000x2000, we're getting um, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6x all at the same number of cores. Whereas the matrix of two, size 2100 is just observing a 2x and 4x speed up. At 5 cores, there are no similarities. Over here, we have various statistical identifiers such as mean, median, quartiles, minimum, and maximum. 8 out of 12 times the median is greater than the average. The energy readings for the Steele algorithm as well as the algorithm which is parallel but only utilizing a single core use way more uh, energy than any of the parallel algorithms that uh, use more than two cores. Here we see the average energy consumption for speed up per core, as seen before, where we saw at one core only where 100% is just a 1x speed up. For the 2000 matrix, uh, that you can see this 3 times speed up reduces when 3 cores are utilized, but the 2 times speed up energy usage increases all when the uh, core number of cores increases. The lowest energy is generally consumed by speedups that are equal to the number of cores utilized. Here we have the medium energy consumed for speedups per core. Here we have the different speedups that were obtained with the different matrices data sets. When using 400 uh, sized matrices, 
we got um, a lot of speed ups that's just 1x and a lot of uh, huge portion that's just 0x also. 66% is 1x. Well, with the, the 2000 matrices, both of them, we aren't getting any 0x results. A 6x speed up is much more common for a 2000 size matrix than a 2100 size matrix. Here we have an efficiency rating for each of the matrices uh, with a different number of cores being utilized. The 2000 matrix is, uh, has the highest efficiency overall and um, the, there seems to be a pattern with the 2000 matrices, both of them, 2000 and 2100, where it goes up and then down and up and then down. There, if we were to extrapolate, I'm uh, assuming, guessing, that uh, the red line would go up and then the yellow line would go down, perhaps. But it's strange how the 400x uh, increases where both the 2000 matrices decrease. Here we have the energy consumption spread per core. Can't exactly get the values written on the graph, but as we've seen before, the energy consumption of the serial and one core parallel algorithm is very much higher than this, the consumption of the parallel algorithms. In order to run the test, you need to run setup.sh to install FastFlow and its dependencies. In case you want to uninstall, there's a script for that. Um, you can generate a text file with the, all the matrices by running matrix generator.py and the size of the matrices can be assigned if the variable sentence and matrix dimensions are edited. Uh, if you set it to an empty value, uh, matrices of varying size with the dimension no longer than 10 shall be generated. Uh, then you run makefile.sh to build the C++ binary. Then you run tests.sh and wait until the computation is complete. Once the data is processed, it is found in PyScript slash output folder under stitch.txt. Conclusion. The results that we found have shown that faster speedups lead to lower energy consumption, but the results obtained are too few to prove a valid correlation. Another reason the results do not prove a correlation are that the greater number of cores reduce the energy requirement to carry out the computation due to lower frequency per core. The script that le reads laptop battery could potentially serve to help take energy readings in future projects. A search space could not be constructed due to lack of quantity of data to search through as well as inconclusive results. Further work will require to parallelize and test multiple algorithms, much like those provided in the PAMPAR um, 